We on? <laughs> All right. Uh, I wanted to go over some basic principles of uh, some heat, uh, some heating configurations, and some heating ideas. Uh, I guess probably the first thing I want to say is heat travels in three different ways: induction, convection, and radiation. And uh, like conduction, I mean, convection is like in an oven, just air currents. Conduction is obviously just conducting it through a, a, a material. And the radiation or radiant heat is the radiating heat off, like the sun radiates heat off uh, to the earth. Um, most people build houses like a big cooler. They insulate them really well. Um, and they rely heavily on the convection. They're pumping warm air in there. Uh, the convection rolls around in the house, uh, comforts in the air temperature. Uh, the problem with convection is, is that if you have any leak or any hole or any fresh air coming in, all your air temperature, uh, all your comfort in your air temperature escapes out. Uh, so it just doesn't, uh, everybody's trying to caulk up holes and seal stuff up because they're living in the cooler. It, the great things about rocket stoves is, is that they're radiant heat. And you can have fresh air and have the doors more open and more of a leaky structure, and you're still getting that radiant heat. The, the comfort in the structure itself, not in the air temperature. And so, uh, even with a little fresh air coming in, you're still not, uh, you know, uh, losing all your comfort and heat. Now, uh, I did a video on uh, heating a greenhouse, and uh, I used the words death of the rocket stove. I said I can make a pretty good case for uh, the reason why uh, that design worked better than a rocket stove. So I'm going to kind of go over some of the numbers and some of the principles that will back that up. Uh, first thing I want to say is, is that uh, Cobb here is 95 pounds per square foot. Okay. The cob's 95 pounds per square foot and has a cob heating capacity of 0.2, okay? On the other hand, water here is 62 pounds per square foot, but it has a heating capacity of 1.0. Well, so it's uh, five times, right? Bottom line is, is because of the weight differential but the increased heating capacity, water stores 3.62 times as much heat or uh, as a uh, cob, that should be cob there, right? So that, that's what you need to know basically, is water stores 3.62 times the amount of heat, okay? Back out. Uh, here's the configuration of a rocket stove, right? This is, probably everybody recognizes this is a rocket stove, this shaded area uh, indicates your burn tube. Uh, let's go into some things about the cob. Well, what's happening here is uh, this downdraft, this push that's happening in this barrel, all this surface area that is your uh, exhaust tube or your flue is getting cooled because you have all the surface area to it. So a lot of rocket stoves have uh, backflash problems. Uh, you see all different kinds of configurations uh, from swivels that swivel around up here to, to block from any direction to, to tees to things built around it. So if you'll notice on YouTube, you'll see a lot of the guys have done different configurations without saying, hey, I'm backdrafting. I'm backdrafting. Now, I know that the math, how tall this right here is compared to this right here, right? And Ian, what's his name? Ian Sorrento wrote the book. and. I've seen several built just according to that book and according to that math, and it says what two and a half times this, whatever this height is, two and a half times this, right? And there's only so many lineal feet, but this is cooling this off. It's causing a little bit of a backdraft. We're doing some things on ours to try to change that. I'll be shooting a video on that later. But the other thing is, is they, they talk about how much less wood that these things use. Yes, they use less wood, uh, but the burn very fast and it goes out very fast so you see all the guys on YouTube and around there trying to work on continuous feeding systems for this uh, and you also see guys that are trying to combine a 
a regular stove with a rocket stove, and they got the barrel sitting up on them, you know, trying to combine these principles. Well, the principle that you really need to, come, to take into mind when considering a heating system is how much thermal capacity you got, how much thermal heat storage back out a little bit. This is a configuration that I made. This is an example of one that could be. Now, if this is the box that it had rock all on it, and this is just in your living room, you couldn't see inside this, and this is your flue, there's your fireplace there, right? Now, that, that could be a fireplace, or that could be a wood stove insert with a six inch line up there. Well, what I've done is, is inside that box is take two 50 gallon hot water tanks that happen to be gas that have the four inch line that goes through them and put them in there and set them inside inside that box. And so inside that box, that natural heat is going on, heating this water. Number one, you put a coil here and you go from this coil to here to here to here and heat both these 100 gallons of water. Now, the advantage of that is, is you're, you, you can tune this. You don't have to have all the surface area that you got in a rocket stove robbing the heat off of your pipe. You're only robbing the heat off of this section of pipe down low. This section here will go ahead and heat up and you'll go ahead and continue your draft and you won't have any draft problems. Um, secondly, you know, this, this hot water is going to hold, that 100 gallons, again, is going to hold uh, the square foot capacity there per square foot. It's going to hold 3.62, the same amount of square foot as if that was cobbed. So that's a, that's, a, that's a big bench. Well, another advantage this gives you is this gives you the potential to use these, this water as pre-hot water for your hot water tank. There's no reason not to be using it. In addition, you see here, this could be plumbed to another location to your house. When this gets to a temperature that you want it to start cooling down, thermostat control, kick this on and pipe this water to another location and with a fan blowing over it, be a heat exchanger for your tanks, but it could also be remote heat transfer, right? And it could be thermostat control. So in this configuration, I've got a fan up here and put a trunk line across up behind my pipe here and I'm pushing two four, you see I'm pushing two four inch lines down through, I'm pushing air the opposite way through those tanks. And down here at the bottom, I've got an outlet there, both on both sides of that box, blowing that hot air through those tanks. And that can be thermostat controlled and help regulate the temperature on that water as well. Okay, one it back out a little bit. One of the other advantages is, is thermal electrics, right? So thermal electrics, <clears throat> on a rocket stove because they burn so hot so quick and then they go out they cool off They don't maintain a good even temperature over a longer period of time This year you'll be able to get in, on a wood stove. This is a wood stove You'll be able to get more consistent temperatures better for thermal for the thermal electrics. Well, let's talk about wood It seems to be a big deal how much less wood that these rocket stoves use Well, this is going to use less wood because it's going to heat but really what I've discovered in a rocket stove is you're exchanging uh, time that you'd be out in the woods, the forest, cutting logs and trees, um, and that prep time to get ready to burn something like this, you're changing that for if you're going to use a rocket stove, having to sit there in the evening on a small burn chamber and feed that thing for an hour or two hours, and you got to pretty much sit there and mess with it every 15, 20 minutes and adjust it, until you get your cob up to the temperature that you need to maintain your house. So it's a, it's a little bit, uh, you know, it's, it's a fair trade. Now, when you get a wood stove in here that can go eight hours on a single burn, and so let's talk about which one's easier. You're going to burn sticks in the rocket stove for two hours and sit there and feed it little sticks until you get your cob up? Or do you want to throw four or five logs into your, into your stove and it burned for eight hours and you store enough heat for another eight hours or another ten hours and it really depends on your coil and how many tanks you got this can be tuned now if you put too much coil on here you will hurt your draft here the more coil the bigger the firebox because you can only get a percentage off of here without robbing that so if you're going to heat butt you'll notice that uh, a lot of the like wood stove with just a single loop heat uh, water heater heat exchanger in there well they say will heat 150 gallons 
So really, this 100 gallons in the inside of a inside of a, a faux fireplace wouldn't be anything. 150, even 200 gallons wouldn't be bad. Uh, you also get visual light off of this. Uh, let's see. Uh, Backdraft problem, easiness. How? What's your likeliness of having success on this? Well, and what the finish is. You know, this can be finished any way you want it. I mean, this can get a top-notch finish on it. Uh, any, you could use your uh, hot water. If that was your, if that was your whole thing, then this could be a waterfall. You could have an indented waterfall and be running heated water down in front of your fireplace there, off of your tanks transferring and making the whole area of your front rock of your uh, fireplace thermal mass warming it up through the water running over it. So, uh, you know, that's a, that could be another possibility. You're going to get a more tra traditional finish. Uh, if you look on these rocket stoves online, I'm just, I'm just challenging you to look at a lot of them. You'll see that right here and right here, they're blacked up. They're blacked up because there's smoke coming out, right? That's only, that's only soot. That's soot. Now you'll see some that got new cob on them that aren't, but you'll see them blacked up right here. Um, and it's been my experience that on a backdraft, a windy day, if they don't get enough outside air, if the room's too sealed up, I'm not saying this is a bad configuration. I'm saying that though that water holds 3.62 times the amount of thermal mass. And so a fire with a coil and some tanks and a little bit of air movement really does store more heat and it's going to give you a better finish. You're going to have better likelihood of having success and getting what you want. And you're going to spend less time cleaning this out. You know, you don't have the clean outs. You don't have the condensation that comes out of a rocket stove coming down on you. Or coming out on you. Uh, and multi-fuel po possibilities. So let's talk about multi-fuel possibilities. Uh, the rocket stove, now we've hooked one up, we've got it, we've had one running on uh, waste vegetable oil and burnt motor oil. Uh, it takes some doing to do that and get it dripped in there. Uh, you, but you, you're not going to run coal. Uh, you're not, you know, you're probably not going to run corn or pellets in that. I've seen some guys try to make pellet feeders because they're trying to get away from feeding that thing by hand is what they're trying to do. On um, this one here, if you put a wood stove on this, then it's pretty easy to get a wood stove to be drip feed oil. It's also some of those wood stoves come right off the factory ready to burn pellets. Some of them are multi-fuel stoves. You can burn pellets, you can burn, you know, pecan uh, shells or, or whatever you want to. Uh, so, so, and some of them are even burn coal. And when you get into coal uh, in this configuration, yeah, you get a whole lot. Just to give you an idea how much better the water is than the cob, okay? If you had the same amount of square foot area as cob, as water in this, then this, and you're like, well, that's going to hold a lot more water. It's a whole lot easier to get it, or you know, more mass there. This would have to be heated to 650 degrees to store the same amount of energy as this water would at 200 degrees. Okay. Now this will take up over boiling, and that's an advantage because the water will boil. So that's an advantage that the water will boil, will boil and boil off. And you don't want that to happen. So the cob is really an advantage because you can get it over the temperature. But again, the cob would have to be 250 degrees to store the same amount of heat as if the water had only hit two. It only hit 200 degrees. Okay, so uh, that's enough of my rant and rambling. I hope. Uh, just kind of shed some light on some of this subject for you guys. If you guys got any questions or comments, uh, let me know. Thanks.